call from a, a group of Marines out on patrol that they had local national intel that there was an IED in this area. Because it was located in a road, basically we were going to remove it from its emplacement just to save the road and detonate it out in the field. I began working on the IED and when I went down to basically move the main charge, it detonated in my right hand. I knew what had happened. I knew the sound of stuff falling down around me because we'd heard it so many times before. I got on the bird and they hit me with something right in the chest and I was out. Woke up to his phone call, a gentleman from Quantico called me. He's like, I just wanted to let you know, um, Brian Meyer, gunnery sergeant, are you related to him? I'm like, yes, he's, he's my husband. He's been in a uh, serious um, ac accident. He's been blown up. Um, He's lost his right leg, right hand, and uh, some of his fingers on his left hand. The first time I saw Jessica again after the explosion was in the intensive care unit. I don't know if she'd seen me before that or not, but I kind of woke up and she was standing in the doorway. I remember looking at him and he's just like, oh, hey, you're here, you know? And he's just like, I just want you to know I lost some body parts. And I'm like, I, I know that, but it's okay. My hospital stays were extremely short. I was three weeks there flew to uh, the Naval Medical Center in San Diego, and then we were there for like four days and we were outpatient. Once he moved from Bethesda to Balboa, uh, I think that was the hardest part for him. Um, I recall a couple moments where he just would be so tired or he just didn't want to do it, and sometimes I'd have to kick him a little and be like, you're not going to give up, you need to push harder, and he would just be like, ugh, what's wrong with me, you know, and he would just snap out of it and, and move on. Our home was a two-story house in California, it was a big home. I was almost never in my wheelchair in my house because it wouldn't fit through the doorways, it wouldn't fit in the bathrooms, uh, it obviously would not go up and down the stairs. So there was a wheelchair upstairs normally and that's where it stayed. Stuff in the kitchen, a lot of the, the cabinets are low, so I'd have to get down and then it wouldn't slide out, there'd be no way to, you'd have to reach back over things. It was exhausting for me, of course, and for, if it, for him even more, but I'd have to move his chair and then after a while, um, we were able to, he was able to shower by himself, but there was a lip. So sometimes late at night, he'd like jump over the lip and I'd be like half asleep and all I hear was like a thump and he'd be on the ground. And I'm like, oh my gosh, are you okay? Looking at the new plans of the new home, uh, as well as the appliances that are gonna be in there, the pull out portions of the cabinets as well as the pull down portions are just gonna aid me in basically not breaking all of our dishware. The, uh, the space that I, I would normally be used to is, is just that much bigger in the new home where I don't have to worry about necessarily uh, tripping over something so everything's wide open. I think the strongest attributes for me, I always worry about him showering. I'm excited to see that there's going to be a bench now and he's going to be able to sit down and shower and be comfortable and not have to like jump over a lip and then fall. I'm, I'm a do-it-yourself kind of guy. I want to get it done. So the areas that are going to require maintenance I can get into even if I had to be in a wheelchair. He's going to be safe, you know, walking around and reaching things and especially I think about our future and we're going to, you know, get older and I know that he's not going to be as mobile as he is now so I know that when he does go in his wheelchair again he's going to be comfortable moving around and doing things and everything like that. Homes for Our Troops uh, does a great job. And I think you'd be hard pressed to go into any community and do a project like Home for Troops is doing and not see the support there. Receiving that kind of attention and generosity is very humbling. I just appreciate everybody's support. I know sometimes, you know, people will always look at, you know, him because he's injured. And then lately, I appreciate just the appreciation to, you know, towards me because I've had to help him out and with everything. So. The fact that they appreciate me too, you know, it's this is for the both of us. Like I feel like this is for the both of us.